Granddaddy's Turn, A Journey to the Ballot Box, written by Michael S. Bandy and Eric Stein, illustrated by James E. Ransom. Where we lived, I didn't need an alarm clock. I woke up to the cock a doo doo of my pet rooster and the chucka 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 of my granddaddy's tractor. Hurry up, boy, he would shout. I'm coming, granddaddy, I say. We've got work to do, my granddaddy would say. Hard work will keep you out of trouble. I guess he figured I was going to get into a whole passel of trouble because he sure gave me lots of chores. We fed the animals, we milked the cows, and we worked in the fields. My granddaddy was a big, strong man who always said he didn't take nothing off of nobody. He could do anything, plow fields, chop wood, and dig fence posts, all without breaking a sweat. Not like me. Sometimes, when I did my chores, I made so much sweat, it was like I was raining. We worked together a lot. We played a lot, too. We really loved to go fishing. Sometimes, I would complain when I didn't get a bite right away, but my granddaddy would always say, patience, son, patience. One morning, while we were eating breakfast, my grandmother brought out a surprise for my granddaddy. She had cleaned and ironed his suit. I didn't understand that since he only wore his suit to church and it wasn't a church day. It's our time and you've got to look your best, my grandmother said. My granddaddy was so excited. He leaped up from the table and gave her a big hug. What's going on, granddaddy, I asked. You'll see, he said with a big beaming smile. I didn't like neckties too much, but since my granddaddy was wearing one, I guess I was too. Y'all be careful now, my grandmother said, and don't forget to take pictures, she said as she handed my granddaddy the camera. We walked and walked. It seemed like a hundred miles. I asked my granddaddy, where are we going again? Patience, son, patience he reminded me with a smile. Oh boy, I thought, we must be going to the county fair. I walked faster. I couldn't wait to get there. I could almost hear the music and smell the barbecue. Where are all the rides and animals? I asked my granddaddy. He laughed and said, what are you talking about, son? I thought we were going to the county fair, I said. Take a look around, my granddaddy said. This is better than any old fair. Then I saw the vote here sign and shouted to my granddaddy, are you voting today? Yes, I am, my granddaddy proudly replied. Nobody in my family had ever voted before. Where we lived, some people were allowed to vote and some people were not. I never knew anyone who had voted before, but I heard my teacher say that some new laws had changed all that. I hope that was true because I didn't want us to get into trouble. It felt like we were standing in line forever. And every time we seemed to get a little closer, someone would cut in line in front of us. That's just how things worked where we lived. It didn't seem to bother my granddaddy though. He said, patience son, takes patience to get what you've got coming to you. When we finally got to the front of the line, my granddaddy proudly signed a paper and was handed a ballot. He clutched the ballot to his chest and said, son, this is the happiest day of my life. I took the camera from him and said, smile granddaddy. Now come on, let's go vote, he said. But before we could even walk to the voting booth, a deputy stopped us and asked my granddaddy, what are you doing, uncle? Where we lived, if white folks didn't know your name, they usually call you either uncle or George or auntie if you were a lady. I'm voting today, sir, my granddaddy replied. The deputy got out a big, thick book and slammed it on the table. 
He opened it to a page with words that look longer than crawfish. Can you read this, uncle? The deputy asked. My granddaddy just stared at the pages and shook his head. No, sir, I can't, he replied. The deputy slammed the book shut, saying, Well, uncle, if you can't read this, then you can't vote. He tore up my granddaddy's ballot and threw it on the ground. I was pretty sure that man wasn't playing by the rules, but he was in charge. I could see my granddaddy was mad. As we headed down the road toward home, my granddaddy didn't say a word, but I saw something I'd never seen before. My big, strong granddaddy had tears in his eyes. Don't worry, granddaddy. I'll vote for you one day, I said to him. My granddaddy passed away before he ever got a chance to vote. I never forgot the day he tried to vote. My granddaddy was so mad, he might have lost his temper. But he knew better than me how important that day was. Even though it wasn't his time to vote that day, he looked to the future. When I went to vote for the first time, I remembered what my granddaddy always said. Patience, son, patience. He was right. The day finally came, and I knew that, just like my granddaddy, I would never take it for granted. With his picture in my hand, I put my ballot in the box, smiled, and said to myself, now it's granddaddy's turn.